this is Evie with Banded, and I'm here today with three out of four of the members of Cold Shoulder. I'm really excited to be chatting with you guys today. Thanks so much for taking some time out to talk to me about your music, your band, and just everything in between. So I'm really excited. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks for having, Thanks us. For having us. So my first question for you, um, for anyone who hasn't listened to you, uh, introduce <clears throat> yourselves and your band and give us your best elevator speech, like who you are, what you're about, what you strive to achieve in music, et cetera. Well, I'm um, Jacob. I play the drums. Joe. I'm Joe. I play guitar. Uh, I'm Marcus. I'm on the vocals. Um, Jacob, can I take the elevator pitch? Oh, you <clears throat> All right, we're a rock band. We have a whole bunch of different influences, everything from, you know, Papa Roach to say Queen, 70s, Aerosmith, um, Guns N' Roses, but we're a rock band uh, teetering on hard rock and we're just trying to make music that's fun. Um, a lot of rock is real, real serious lately and it's, uh, we think that it's turning some people off to the genre and so we're saying, hey, let's have fun with it and everyone come hang out and party and have some good tunes. That's awesome. I love that. So my next question for you is actually for Marcus. Um, and I just want to know, where'd you learn to sing like that? <laughs> and uh, what are some of your best tips for fellow vocalists like myself? I'm a singer. So I'm just curious to know how you do it. So I started singing. Um, I was that kid in the grocery <laughs> store. I was like three years old and singing for all the people in line. <laughs> um, so I've been singing for a long time. But um, for me, started singing in church when I was young. Um, growing up, started listening to rock music, listening to all types of music and said, oh, let me sing along. And uh, just gaining experience over the years. I've, I've sung in some other bands. I've taken voice lessons. Um, my recommendation to people would be, A, get some training. It, it seems expensive, but even just a few lessons could be extremely helpful. And then B, you got to practice. Like <laughs> a lot of people are like, I can sing. So you got to practice, get some help. And then third, um, and Joe and Jacob can testify that I don't always do this, but make sure you warm up. Um, if you don't warm up and you're not ready to go, um, you're either A, going to hurt yourself or, or B, not sound your best. So. You're going to have a bad time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's quite true. That's quite true. I've done, I've done some gigs and I, I make sure to warm up before doing gigs. It definitely does help. Uh, vocal health is certainly important. Um, well, my next question for you is I want to know what has been your biggest bucket list moment as a band so far? Like something you've achieved that feels totally unreal and amazing. Hmm. <laughs> uh, it's a, uh, at least for me, it's a, uh... Like, we don't have the highest streaming numbers in the world. I don't know. We only have, like, 6,500 monthly listeners or something. But I used to look at bands that even had 1,000 monthly listeners and be like, man, one day, hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully that can happen. Um, but seeing the growth in terms of the, mm -hmm. the streaming numbers has been super, like, fun. Waking up every morning, like, all right, where's it at now? Like, <laughs> but yeah, I used to look at other bands and be like, man, we'll never be there. And it's kind of cool to see that. Nah, we still have a couple streams, but it's getting there, you know? <laughs> for sure probably for me. me uh the um getting the actual physical eps the cds that we got in the mail like actually have them printed out like that's something that you know we can have forever it's physical it's got our names on it the whole actually like seeing it and holding it it's like oh wow like we actually did something, you know, the streaming numbers are awesome too. Like, I think I do the same thing as Jacob. I wake up and I'm like, it hasn't updated yet. Where are we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but that's for me at least. Um, for me, I didn't even know it was a bucket list thing until it happened. Um, <clears throat> Cause you know, playing shows is fun. Yeah. We all agree the streaming numbers and seeing, seeing growth is exciting, but I had someone recently. So Shouts out to uh. <laughs> Bad Madam B. I had someone draw a picture of me. I've never had yes. that happen before in any capacity. That was probably the most flattering thing anyone's ever done for me in my life. So uh, Big Madam B from Russia, big ups. Heck yeah, yeah, fan art. Gotta love fan art. 
That's got to be cool. You're like, whoa, I never thought anybody would take the time to like draw my face in detail before. That's got to be. Yeah. Cool. Usually we have to pay for that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and it was good too. That was, yeah. You know, I'll, I'll draw my little stick figures. Or if you're pre-ordering the EP, anyone out there, if you pre-order, I will draw you a picture of whatever you want, as long That's as it awesome. doesn't get the FBI on me. <laughs> or, 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 and even then it's all under the table it's all under the table yeah. that's a great incentive yeah. to get the pre-order yeah and if it uh if it gets to the news then uh hey for publicity right free publicity yeah so the next thing i want to know is what's been the biggest challenge that you face so far as an up-and-coming band in the rock industry or in the music industry hmm covid <laughs> Right. Yeah, it hasn't it hasn't been easy. Um, and Jacob can probably speak to some of the the things that we had upcoming that have um, been postponed. But um, yeah, COVID and the writing process has been challenging. It's brought some, some new exciting things though. It makes us um, take more time listening to each other's ideas and also fleshing out your own ideas. Um, I hate to sound cliche, but I think a lot of the uh, current rock aficionados or rock fans they um they're always saying they want new stuff but then they don't actively look for it which is understandable so um it's kind of a challenge for everyone in the scene and so um we, we've been happy to get the feedback we've had and um, you know small amounts of success we have had by being able to touch some of those people and say hey here's some elements you might be familiar with but here's you know here's how we do it um so finding an audience I guess could be a, a tough one because yeah you jump on Instagram and it's, it's the same stuff all over the place which mm -hmm. is popular for a reason but I'm um, trying to find our audience to connect with <clears throat> I would say that's that's the hardest part is trying to kind of carve your own niche because there's a with social media you know it's uh and streaming and stuff there's more music out there than ever so how do you kind of stand out from the crowd mm -hmm. That's understandable for sure. Um, so the next thing that I'm curious about is who is an artist or band that you would most love to collaborate with? Just anybody in the world. <clears throat> or me, Dave Grohl. Yes. Can't go wrong. Can't That's go just wrong me there. personally. <laughs> Elaborate. That's... Yeah, that's a hard one. Interesting. There, yeah, because there's lots of folks I'd like to write songs with and perform with, collaborate. I don't know. I'd love to get someone like, uh, I'd love to get like a Kanye West in there. Let's do something crazy. Um, yeah. <laughs> Joe shakes his head. He's like, this free. Um, <laughs> more, more, up our, <laughs> more up our alley. How do we get Chad Kroger from Nickelback on the I was going to say Nickelback, I bro. Want, <laughs> I just won't sing. Like, bro, you sing it for me. I'll do the harmonies. Let's go. Yes. Let's go. What about you, Jacob? I was gonna say Nickelback. So, yeah. <laughs> or or Jacoby from Papa Roach, maybe. Yep. Mm -hmm. They've been doing a lot of collabs right now, anyway. So it's kind of. Yeah. Might not be. Hey, sh good. shouts out if it gets to you, Jarris Johnson. Come on a song. For real. Let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> So another thing I'm curious about is I'm wondering if you have any like funny, memorable or wild stories from touring or recording or performing or shooting or just anything that you'd be uh, interested in sharing with our listeners. Okay, who wants to tell the story? <laughs> There's the, one story that stood the, out. Uh, <laughs> the, the forest? Yes. You Ooh. go ahead. Yeah, okay. that's all you. <laughs> so we were doing a double <laughs> video shoot. So we did... Um, the shoots for Faithless and Know Your Enemy two in one day, which was challenging, <laughs> but it was fun. So it's the end of the day. Um, and by end of the day, I mean like from Jacob, what, 5 a.m. to like to like midnight? 2 a.m. after midnight. <laughs> 2 a.m. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 2 a.m. Probably more like it. Um, 5 to 5. Yeah, you know, just those 24s, working 24. Um, <clears throat> but we were in like the middle of like, yeah, like a wooded foresty area and um we had just finished or we were just about to finish shooting <clears throat> and the music video is like kind of spooky right so we're in the woods we're dressed in all black 
and we're like, okay, let's do this last thing, move this light here. And, you know, it's extremely quiet because it's two o'clock in the morning and we just hear ringing, 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 ringing. And we're like, what? we're looking around because it's a chainsaw. <laughs> and we look at each other and we're like, this is it. This is where we die. This is fun, guys. <laughs> and um, so we're like frozen and it kind of stops and we're like, okay, we're like looking around, like, what do we have to defend ourselves? And then out of a clearing come these two dudes who are on those like bicycles with like a little engine on it, like a little two stroke motor. And we were like, oh my gosh. <clears throat> we're like, dude, we thought you were going to get us. And they're like, dude, we thought you were going to get us. Like they were just <laughs> riding through this little area and we we're like, oh man. So it all turned out okay. And they're like, all right, have a good night. Well, good morning. But yeah, that was that wasn't just one of the best band moments. That was like one of the scariest moments of my life. I've had to see. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> right. That that's pretty wild. Wow. I, I'd be feeling that same kind of like fight or flight response. That sounds so scary. <laughs> Um, so another thing I'm curious about, you've recently released two new singles, uh, Be Patient and Can You? And mm-hmm. I'm wondering what made you decide to release specifically those two as singles in comparison to other songs you've written and recorded for the for the EP? Um, they were some of the ones R- that were R- left. <laughs> R- R- Shambo. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Basically. Uh, no, uh, we I mean, just felt they were... Um, little different than what we've put out prior to that um and i don't know we we felt we liked the songs a lot so we were hoping that others hopefully liked them too (laughs) yeah and it's it's been fun you know because we we put out our our first single and i think anytime you're a new band and you have um you know there's all this excitement like oh yeah i know those guys let me check out their new band and um we saw some good success with it our next two singles were able to kind of keep people around, right? We didn't we didn't lose folks, which was good. <clears throat> and then, like all bands, it seems like we sat for a while. You know, when everything got shut down, we had content ready to go, but we're like, let's sit. And then uh, we decided, hey, let's just start putting these things out real quick. So um, I think "Be Patient" was the we went with that one because we had that cool video concept with the the one continuous take. So we said, well, let's come back swinging with the fun video and then uh, we'll go from there. Yeah, that's awesome. That was such a cool video. I was definitely curious to know what made you choose those specific songs and super stoked to hear what's coming up for sure. But that video was super awesome. And I loved how you guys did the the one take as well. I thought that was really cool. And everybody who's watching, if you haven't seen the video for Be Patient, go check it out. It's super cool. The ending is really cool. And check out the behind the scenes too. That was pretty funny and pretty cool. Um, so another question I'm curious about, this is a fun question I like to ask. Uh, if you were stranded on a deserted island for one week with only food, water, and a vinyl player to keep you entertained, what album would each of you listen to? And Marcus is like already regretting all his life. Okay. <laughs> so if it's vinyl, does it have to be something that originally came out on vinyl or can it be no, something No, it can new? be any album that's on vinyl. <clears throat> Do I only get one? Uh <laughs> Yeah, one. Can it, can it be those ones that are like they open and they album. have like nineteen <laughs> on them? Sure, sure. Like a Pink Floyd album, there's like nine discs. Yeah. Right. That'll keep you. That'll mm. keep you entertained for a week. Okay, so it was record play. What were the other things? Am I covered for food and water? Yeah, you are. You just just okay. one vinyl yeah. for the whole week. <clears throat> All tomatoes though. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> they can be diced. I hate tomatoes. <laughs> um, Joe, what do you got? What's your record? <clears throat> you know, I, I've got like five in my head right now, but if I would have to take one and I mean, I don't know how long I'm going to be stranded there, but I'd probably go with just the first Van Halen album because it's just yes. good all the way through. <laughs> like, yeah. What's running yeah. with the devil? It starts with right. Running with the devil. You really got me. Eruption. Ain't talking about love. Atomic punk. All that shit. So. All bops. Oh. All bops. That's how you know, man. First song, first album. Yeah. What do you got, Jacob? Probably the black album. Mm. That's a good call. That. 
<clears throat> it's got a little bit of everything. I'm going, um, bringing on haters. I'm going uh, Nickelback, Nickelback, all the right reasons, or Guns N' Roses' Appetite for Destruction. <laughs> <laughs> um, Solid. Yeah, man, first song, first album, Welcome to the Jungle. So good. Yeah, very fitting. I think any of those would be good to keep you entertained. And I like how you preface with like the bring it on haters. I like Nickelback, hey, but <laughs> bring it. Those Someone's are some... buying their album. <laughs> right. <laughs> those They're are going some diamond good... somehow. Yeah, those are some good picks, I'll admit. Um, so another one I'm curious about is I would like to know what advice do you have for any musicians or bands who are looking to make it in the music biz? I know we kind of had that singing advice question, and now I'm mm -hmm. just curious about general general advice for anyone who's just trying to make it. Um, on an individual level, always be writing. Um, it's easy to be like, these are my songs. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, <clears throat> you write something good, you, you learn something when you, when you wrote it. Um, so, you know, always be writing and then don't be afraid to go back to old ideas and change them completely. Um, these guys know I'm notorious for being like, I wrote those lyrics like five years ago. I'm going to use them. They were good, <laughs> but I'm going to use them on something wildly different. They end up on like three different demos and then we're like, all right, we'll use this one. <laughs> yeah. I like the lyrics though. Uh, I don't know, Jacob, you can probably speak more to this than me. Um, well, the, yeah, the, the writing part, because um, it takes a lot of songs to kind of maybe get the better ones out of it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a muscle, right? So the more you do it, the, f the more efficient, the better the songs hopefully get. Um, and then just being consistent, whether that's releasing music, um, whether that's, you know, social media, um, times are kind of pivoting and attention spans are less. So if you're out of sight, out of mind for too long, people just forget about you. So um, specifically for an upcoming band, trying to put yourself out there without being spammy, you know, find unique ways to kind of throw yourself across the, the Instagram feed or whatever social media you want to use. Mm -hmm. But obviously music's, that's number one, but. Yeah, you got to write go. good songs, but you also have to have people hear them. <laughs> right. Yeah. Sorry, I cut you off, Jeff. No worries. I mean, piggybacking off Marcus and Jacob, you know, you got to write, you got to be consistent, you know, um, and obviously quality. <laughs> you got to, you got to really get yourself uh, trained and uh, practice, like Marcus said in the beginning, you know, if you don't practice, you kind of just fall back into bad habits or, you know, you're not really getting anywhere else from there. But I mean, the main thing for me, at least as a musician trying to make it, just have fun with it. Love what you do. I mean, if you're not having fun making the music, it's kind of like, what's the point at right at that point? But it, it's it's like a, it's all three of those things. Love what you're doing. Be consistent. And work. Work on uh work on your craft. That's awesome. That's some great advice, y'all. Um, so then my last question for you is, do you have any upcoming projects or announcements you'd like to plug or share? Just anything at all? Feel free to take the floor now and share away. <laughs> Marcus is starting in OnlyFans. Um. <laughs> he already started it. He's just not promoting it yet. It's just, uh, it's just it's me six months sitting on the bed eating, eating Cheerios. <laughs> I, I knew that is. Uh, Jacob, that's, that's all you, my guy. Well, we do have uh, an EP or an EP coming out on June 11th. So you could pre-order that on all the things you pre-order stuff on. Um, but if you pre-order a physical one, you'll get a Polaroid and Marcus will, uh, he'll try to draw something for you. Um, we hopefully have a show coming up soon. Um, it's still kind of on the fritz, but <clears throat> We don't have a hard confirmation yet, so we can't really, really talk on that. Gotcha. Um, and then we are recording our next batch of songs here in a, like, I mean, this weekend, <laughs> a, a few days. Yeah. yeah. So it goes back to that always writing thing. We're, we're uh, trying to plan ahead. Um, so we're writing our new batch of songs and you'll be hearing those sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I'm definitely looking forward to hearing more about that possible show. 
and I'm looking forward to the, the songs. Um, thank you guys so much for taking some time to chat with me tonight. I really appreciate it. This has been super fun. I'm really excited to share this on Bands and have everybody check you guys out. And uh, everybody go check them out on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Spotify, all the streaming stuff, wherever you get your music, Cold Shoulder Band. We got Jacob, uh, Joe, and Marcus here tonight. Thank you guys so much for chatting with me. It's been a pleasure. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Can you can